Hello and welcome to episode four of Surfing the Portal. I'm Mindy Erkin and I'm back. She's back. Thank God she's back. We have technical help. We can actually do things. Can show. Oops. And was, uh, and One was, of these times we'll get that right and yeah. I'll mute that before we'll we be get started. Okay. Anyway, here we are on Paul Marco channel, and the reason, of course, we're on Paul Marco channel is because we've been kind of locked out of our uh, Pinecone Utopia access to, to Google Hangouts. Now, uh, I always have dogs barking here. You get used to that. You listen for a while. So, anyway, that's the reason we're on Paul Marco channel. Uh, if you don't already know, and you're a a selected individual or a targeted individual. Uh, the Techno Crime Fighters Forum now emanates from uh, Ramola D Reports, and that's on the Ramola D Reports channel on YouTube. And you can find us there, 11 o'clock Eastern Time, every Thursday morning. And uh, the uh, investigative team brings up up to date on what they've uh, found investigating targeted targeting from every angle assembling a court case and I throw my two cents worth in and uh, my two cents worth eventually turned out to be Pinecone Utopia surfing the portal uh, because we've started this research project where we want to find out how people protect themselves kind of mentally, consciousness-wise, uh, belief-wise, how they shield themselves using that kind of technique. And we've, uh, and we've got some really great answers. We've got three or four listed. We've got many more, and Mindy is going to be updating, and we're going to be putting a lot more things on. So you'll be able to see what's working for some targeted individuals or selected people and uh, how to do it. We also have a techniques center where, uh, where we're going to put techniques. We already have a few techniques up there that we'd like to see if you can try, see if they work against uh, your purpose, see if they eliminate some of the pain. Last week we had Romola D my uh, cohort in uh, the Techno Crime Fighters Forum on with us. And we talked about uh, mental focus, uh, enjoying nature and other things as a way to uh, frustrate and stymie the uh, perps uh, in, their, in their attempts to map our brains or irritate us or whatever they're trying to do. So here's how I think it's going to roll out. We're going to talk a little bit about the questions and comments that we've gotten so far. We've got some interesting things I'd like to share with you. And then uh, Mindy just got back, and she discovered a lot of stuff that's changed up in the United States since we've been there. And uh, she's going to uh, talk a little bit about that. And then I want to talk about a different kind of matrix, the matrix of duality. And the last time I talked about this, two days later, we have got thrown off of uh, Google Chrome Hangouts. I don't know whether that's why, but I would imagine. So, so if that's the case, I'm going to keep doing it uh, because it must be something that's fine. Good. Uh, Travis Mond, fine drinking beer helps. Sure, it may not help all of you. So for me, it seems to work just fine, <laughs> except for the hangovers. Well, there's downsides to all these different things. So I'm going to dive into uh, a couple of these uh, interesting responses. This one, one we put in, uh, uh, oh, this was uh, somebody that sent this to a big list. Rethinking certain targeting effects. And uh, let me read a little bit of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
The physical and neurological attackers seek to cause effects on targets that match the avocations or lifestyles of those particular targets. In effect, making the cause of those effects appear natural. In any case, I've always been an outdoors person. During the last couple of years, four basal cell cancers have appeared on my face. The worst one of them on the top of my right ear. No targets, including physicians, might suspect that prolonged exposure to sun rays caused those cancers. Indeed, it probably does in most cases. However, in my case, there's no doubt in mind that my attacker caused those cancers. So he goes on to say, uh, recently, while either sitting on the couch in front of the TV or sitting in my chair using a computer, the spot on my right ear has pulsed, much like the rhythm of a heartbeat. Whenever I place my hand over my ear, however, the pulsing instantly stops. Thus, it's obvious to me that my attackers have focused their devices. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. <coughs> this is why I don't read much because it makes me sneeze. Uh, directly to my location. Otherwise, if the pulsing were neurological, when I place my hand over the ear, it would continue pulsing. What what is the origin of this of that attack? I don't know. However, I've often gone inside at night and seen very large military-looking type drones, sometimes as many as four of them, high above my house. I think that's suspicious. Since I live in a very rural area from my town, that indeed sus appears suspicious. I must have read this before. I think that the vibrations that I receive are neurologically induced. I'm beginning to rethink that idea. Why? Because the vibrations occur only when I'm immobile, usually when I attempt to sleep at night. However, unlike the pulsing on the ear cancer, which occurs only in certain areas of my house, the vibrations occur anywhere, even when I travel abroad. The only criteria that is I seemingly must be a still target when the vibrations occur. Although theories bound, we still know very little for certain about the attacker's mode of attack. And I think it varies based on uh, who you are, because I think that uh, whoever's running this program, well, I su suspect that some interface with AI or some power beyond our ability to, uh, they can do that. They can do a lot of things at once, and they could custom make this program probably for everybody. I had a couple of these other lined out if I can find my paper. Anyway, we have a couple of pieces in the chat. Harvest the name, harvest the electronic Colorado. Probably the name would be called depopulation. I think they're talking about the beer they drink. The beer. General discussion. By the way, the portal is really still under development, and I have not had time to work on it in the last two weeks. So I just want to say I really appreciate your uh, everybody that's writing in and contributing, and um, I promise to update it really soon now that I'll have some time to get back to it. Yeah, let me mention this one. This came in, and I read this earlier, and I thought it was really interesting. And some, some other people might be experiencing this type of shift. It goes, just to let you know, I'm now seeking the next layer of those responsible for overseeing the stocking in my community. The first and lowest level have been primarily young men with what appear to be some kind of military ties. They have also been what I call the local mafia, along with others such as banker, bike, biker gang members and boys on skateboards with knapsacks that are blended in. During the last two days, the young militarists are receding so that now what I'm seeing are young white wives and mothers, as well as young, single, white women. 
course I'm not what? Uh, by any stretch of the imagination saying that all young white wives and mothers and young single white women are contributing to this. There are truly many genuinely decent, that goes blah, 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 blah. But she wanted to report that there, there seems to be different stages, and I bet there are different stages. Because I know uh, a long time ago, I did a podcast with Eric Carlstrom, and we talked about, I think, like six stages that these programs seem to go through. And it's interesting uh, what type of research they would have been doing up to this time to know to shift that type of stalker uh, in her case. Very interesting. Uh, and then there was another one. Oh, there was somebody who, we have an appeal to help. Uh, part, check info, how to help. And we're gonna post those somehow. Uh, this was interesting because uh, this talks about a woman She's talking about her being not only uh, targeted, but she's targeted sexually. And we talked about a technical techno crime fighters forum last Thursday. Ramola and Catherine and I talked about how uh, she's selling uh, virtual sex with these women to perverts from the. Uh, psychopathic side. I was just playing around with that idea because we have exposed things like uh, the Super Bowl as being one of the biggest child trafficking events of the year. I, I mean, it's generally recognized as that. And so when you see things at halftime or on advertisements, you can, I think, pretty much assume that it could be related to uh, the sex trafficking that goes on there. So we, we try to expose that. And uh, so I think that it's pretty interesting how uh, now we see, well, you know it's a program where it's mostly women, not all, but 70, 75% are women. And a lot of them are being raped constantly as their genitals become sore and red and Anyway, so talk about that. But the most interesting thing is, uh, it was really causing problems with the husband, as one might expect. I'm sure that one of the things that happens early on in the program is they strip you of your life support systems, where they take away your your money if you have an income, they take away your friends, they take away your husband, they take away your life. Well, uh, that's what's happening, and she's reaching out to help. And uh, we'll try to do something. I'll try to call her and get in touch with her. And anybody, else, if we can post this, anybody else that would like to do that, it might be a good idea. Now, we also have some tech information. And Mindy made a category for tech information. And uh, here's someone who's uh, giving us advice. And we, well, honestly, we really need advice on this topic because we're not as tech savvy as uh, most people are on the planet because we came in too early. But uh, could you go down, can I summarize this, see, see if we can, this is, starts off with a nice high ball. <laughs> this is by no means an exhaustive list. I encourage everyone to do their own research and find what works for them. EFF is a great place to start. What do you suppose she means by EFF? I don't know. We'll I don't have to know. wait somebody in the chat. All picks right. Up and then that. she's given, oh, I see it um, because it's in the uh, URLs. Um, there's four URLs to try. That's EFF. Research what whistleblowers, journalists, et cetera, have used. I used Lavabit email for a while. Then it came out that Snowden used it and the site owner chose to close it rather than comply with FBI requests. Lavabit is running again, but I don't think it's free anymore. And this was in response to our probably our asking, right? Yeah, you know, what can we do? And, we, and honestly, we got a lot of response, but we haven't tried anything yet, right? That's this week's work. Yeah, we'll be working hard this week to find some alternatives. Um, they're also saying switch to DuckDuckGo or we do use DuckDuckGo, it's quick instead. 
goodgopher.com is used specifically to search for indie news. And there's a lot more in the email. I'm not going to read it all, but um, thank you to Marie who wrote this to us. And we're going to be following up on this and we'll post it. So if anyone else also wants this information, um, you'll have it too. We'll figure out a way. We need to redesign the blog so that it can incorporate things outside of the of the categories that we've already set up. Um, yeah, but so, we're big at over creating categories. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So, so interesting. Uh, on the chat, we have two guys targeted targets. They're talking about the one guy saying uh, Travis is saying his sex drive has been intensified quite enormously. It's part of his targeting. They control by sex. They do it just to Tavistock. It's a big deal. They're sex cults. I find that rape is right on target. That's a great topic. Hi, great topic. Ortain, hi, how are you? Oh, oh. Electronic Frontier Foundation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. That's great. Well, anyway, go to our site. Uh, have patience with us. We had some incredible things go on in the family, and Mindy had to take off. And... Uh, if, if you've been paying attention, you know that Mindy is like three quarters of the show. I'm like the uh, puppet here, but she's the one that really <laughs> does, the, does the stuff. <laughs> so when she's gone, we're just like dead in the water. But we're going to pick up speed and go pretty fast. Hello, Ortain. Okay. Mindy came back from uh, the States. And because she needs to stay and manage things back in the state. She got a hold, got herself a hold of like an what's it called, an iPod? iPhone. An iPhone. We call them scrying mirrors because that's actually what they are. But uh, tell her how that. that share a little <laughs> bit about that. Okay. Well, I noticed many changes since I have spent any amount of time in the United States, and I think more or less we've been out since about two thousand. Nine. Well, nine, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I realized that you absolutely cannot function there without a scrying mirror, without an iPhone. It's almost impossible to navigate what I like to call the matrix because that's what it right. seems like to me. But um, so I, I've always been very wary about the iPhone. I know how... Um, what the end game is, shall we say? I mean, why, why you have to have an iPhone now to navigate life? And but but because of the circumstances of um, things that are going on, I needed to have one so that I could get and receive text messages. Well, I have to say that iPhone is so seductive. I mean, it really almost emits kind of a feel good. Yeah. hormone out of it or something, some vibration that really makes you love that iPhone and want to spend time with it and interact with it. And normally I really dislike learning new technical programs that I have to operate inside of. I have the strong resistance, but I usually force my way through it until I learn what I need to. But with the iPhone, I didn't even, I mean, I was enjoying learning it, which is so out of character. Yeah, so, and also she was telling me she enjoys the variety of foods you can get, how delicious the food is, and how easy it is to get around. If you have one of those little scrying mirrors, mm -hmm. you can call the Uber, they'll pick you up, charger. I mean, it's just like, it's like enjoying your servitude. Oh, it's, it's like so absolutely like loving that. the matrix. Mm -hmm. It's so soft and so subtle. It comes up all around you. And uh, I just thought it was worth mentioning because we're by no means out of it. I mean, we're, we're, we're in the matrix here. But when it's just like a little d different degree, maybe. And, uh, to much less of a degree. Yeah. Because so, really the U.S. is the focus of of everything, of the big experiment. It's the velvet 
it's the, it's the tender trap. It's the tender trap. Yeah. Yeah. So. So uh, yeah, that's a good two cents. Uh, I think it was worth mentioning because uh, we're going to talk about. I want to talk about another kind of matrix. I want to talk about another uh, type of situation, and this is the situation that I was talking about. I think when I got my channel taken off. There's a bigger matrix that we're all involved in, and uh, I'm going to call it for the sake of argument or the sake of just saying something. Let's call it the world duality world. Uh, we're going, it seems like our experience has to do with black and white. I mean, the, the, the Masonic symbol, the floor, the black and white, the good and the bad, Satan and Jesus Christ. Uh, it's, it's all about duality and functioning in duality. Yin and the yang. Right, the yin and the yang. It's, it's, that's, it's where we are, we're in a duality situation. And uh, I think that uh, this duality has existed as far back as, as, as consciousness can, to, can remember. And, but the duality, uh, has really ramped up over the last two or three or 4,000 years uh, with the advent of the Abraham, Abrahamic religions. Uh, I think that uh, the, the, the polarization of the duality happened there. I mean, there's, there's a God and then there's a Satan, there's, there's the good and there's the bad. And the drama plays out through, you know, uh, Judaism and then Islam and then down into Christianity. But it's all about, and of course, the first response is you want to go to, uh, you want to go to the light. You want to, you know, if, if it's a battle of good and evil, I want to be on the good side. Uh, now, it's, it's not that easy. It's a little more complicated. There's a lot of seduction over to the bad side. Also, there's a lot of deception. So unless you're awake and you're aware and, you're, and, you're, and your wits are about you and you realize that you're making a decision just about every moment, uh, you want to, it's hard to consistently be on one side. But as we get down and as we get into the 21st century now, we see that the, that the obje objective of something, whoever controls this duality world, is to pull us all apart and really polarize, uh, uh, polarize one side or the other. Are you an Antifa or are you a hard right winger? Are you a Black Lives Matter person or are you, I don't know what would be the opposite of that? That's racist. What? White supremacist. Yeah, I guess. So, but it's, it's being more and more polarized. And the more we get involved in that duality world, the more it polarizes. I don't know. I, I use the example of Chinese handcuffs and people that have been born in the last 30 years have no idea what I'm talking about. Chinese handcuffs were a woven uh, tube. And uh, the little, it was a tube about four inches long, and it was big enough for you to put your fingers in both ends of this little tube. But when you would pull the tube, it was constructed of straw in such a way that the more it would grip you. So the more you, so it was like the more you pulled apart, the more you were engaged with this duality world. So. That's what's happening right now. We're losing ourselves in the duality of it. Uh, you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm on one side or another, and it's very confusing. It's very seductive, but there's no doubt that we're we're in the bottom of the duality. Now, most people, no, I can't say most people. There are philosophers down through the years 
and religious figures down through the years who figured out that in duality world, there's no winning. There's no, uh, the end game of the ones who pick the right side getting rewarded and the ones who pick the bad side uh, being not rewarded or being punished. I mean, it's kind of a kind of a black and white thing. And I don't think it yields uh, the richness and the texture of le a lesson that could have, uh, that could have come from that. So I think if you just leave it and you're struggling in duality world, which we all do all the time, uh, you might be missing some. Now here's what I here's what I think happened. I think down through the ages, I mean Paul Paul Marco is not the you know sharpest guy in the uh, in the cavalry set, uh, so there must be thousands of people that have come to this decision. And I, I'm sure I even read it in a book. But the trick is to get out of the duality. The trick is to figure out duality. And so there's been answers down through the years. Uh, Jesus Christ had an answer. Um, Mohammed had an answer. And uh, of Satan had an answer, and uh, I could tell you about to tell you about the different answers. To get out of duality world, where you're against them and I'm against you, and you know, we're there's always a way to to cut finer and finer uh, divisions between us. So to get out of the world, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ or the story of Jesus Christ has as a as an answer there is if you love everybody the way I love you which is assumed to be deeply and sincerely then the duality world will go away you see how that would work now I think Muhammad had another answer to get out of the duality world and his answer was uh, peace. And there can be peace when there's no dissenting views. The answer to me in that, in that uh, philosophy, religion, what do you want? That if you wipe out the dissenting beliefs, you get out of duality world. Now, the downside to this is you have to do it through hate and violence leaves consciousness with a very low uh, uh, residue. In other words, we'd have to act in a malevolent way. Sir, would leave us on a very high vibrational level because love and gratitude, and that's a different level. Uh, there was another answer in 1666 uh, the origin of actually the most recent story of good against evil duality started in 1666 with a guy named Sebastian Sevi. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are, are, know that he started the synagogue of Satan. What he reasoned was we want God to return, meaning the end of dualism. And God said, I will return. I don't know what text he's referring to. God says, I will return if everybody's either all good or all bad. Return when there's no more duality. So Sebastian Seve reasoned that since everybody is tempted all the time, there's not much of a chance that everybody's going to be good. His idea was everybody should be bad and bad any way we can. And that the incarnations of the satanic elite groups that we have, because uh, Sebastian Savis, uh, so you how you say, protege, a guy by the name of Jacob Frank, who uh, reincarnated itself, uh, you know, got together with Weisskopf and the Rothschilds 
to start this push of black against white, the, the push of Satanism now. So, uh, so there are other answers as to how to get out of this, out of this duality world. Uh, I thought one of the things that uh, we could talk about getting out of this duality world is first of all realizing who created the duality world. Uh, and if you follow the Abrahamic religions, there's a creator God. And this creator God, um, from what I can tell, uh, was either the creator of the, or the instigators of both sides of the duality, which makes total sense. If you want to create a, a mechanism where you're teaching people about lessons in duality, you'd have to create the duality. Since uh, the creator God has never spared any expense, I'd say that a program this sophisticated as well within something that might, that might be done by that, that creator God. So you think about that, then you have to realize that there is stuff that isn't God or his creation. And I know this is going to be a real leap. Uh, if you can follow me on this, if there's a God, there's got to be stuff that's not God. This creator God that created the duality, and I think manages the duality, Jane saying, this is made up of male and female. The world's governments are only led by men most part. I think that it's all led by a, uh, a satanic sex cult. Mm -hmm. And the movers and shakers in a sex cult. And so I, I have to agree with you. Anyway, let's get back to uh, whatever I was saying. I think I was talking about duality mm -hmm. and imagining. So if you can, it's hard to get your head around something that's not duality, and I think this might help. If you can imagine that the whole unfolding of history, everything that we know in duality world, was created within the context of something larger. And uh, it's, I think that in order to get your mind to think of something outside of duality world, it's good to conceptualize something outside of duality world. Now, I'll read you as a little kind of a conceptualization by a guy named Lao Tzu, who lived about 500, uh, 800 years uh, before Christ. Uh, during that time, uh, they thought, the people alive at that time, uh, people that preceded them in history had great wisdom. And if you think a lot of uh, a lot of the Eastern philosophies, the devolution of man, so that mankind, I don't mean men, I mean all of us, uh, were at some point much more uh, knowledgeable, advanced, in touch with our, I think we were more spirit. And then as we devolved down into the, this rough thing that we're going through now that they would call the Kali Yuga, that I'm gonna call the, the, the crux of the duality issue. It's the, it's the thing that the God wanted us to be in here to learn. It's the, it's, it's the most important part of the whole cycle is the part we're in right now because we're really seeing this this duality and how, no matter how they separate us, they can still separate us further and separate us further. And there's no, unless you climb out of the box. And I think that's what Jesus and Mohammed, and unfortunately or fortunately, uh, Sebastian Sebi were out to do. Now, the, I think that, that Jesus Christ answer is better because 
it models a high vibration. I mean, remember, this is spiritual battle, so it's all about energy and vibration. So anyway, that the idea of loving one another. But before I think you can get into loving one another and seeing across, you have to go get above it to look down on the duality to see why it's Chinese handcuffs and why you can't escape by pulling away from it. it gets you tighter and tighter and tighter. You have to kind of rise above it. And I think this little thing that's written by uh, Lao Tzu really in a cool way. Uh, the, the notion that people in the olden times were wiser is reinforced by uh, certain architectural finds. Uh, go definitely Tepe is one of them. Uh, that would uh, be like 9,000 years old, if, if you can trust carbon dating at all. And it would be somewhere where they it was more of a uh, a more harmonious with nature kind of thing. Uh, so anyway, so Lao Tzu would always look back and he would explain how the how the ancient ones would talk. Now this talks about what a thing called the Tao. It's spelled T A O, and it's it's the river. It's the background that God created everything within. It's the, it's the ground of all being. It's the outflow of consciousness. And I always think of it as being a verb and not a noun. If you can get your head around that, it might take a little bit. So let me read uh, a little bit about this. And what, the reason I'm doing this is to try to get you to think beyond duality. Okay, it says, The Tao told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. So what they're saying, right, is that if you can name it, it's got to be separated from this. Only the Tao, and even by giving that a name, you're kind of demeaning it. Uh, uh, abused says, it's not going. You're going off topic. Okay, let me get up back on topic anyway. Okay, so if you can see somebody, it's it's just the ground of all being. It's just it's just there. So it said, the unnameable is the eternally real. So it's always there. It's always been there. Naming of all particular things, and if you remember, in the. Uh, well, this would be in the Jewish and the Christian Bible. Uh, doesn't the God speak things into existence? Then he makes them exist. And by naming the duality, he made the duality exist. It didn't before this time. The unflowing, the verb. Uh, okay, now this thing is free from desire. Free from desire. You realize the mystery. Caught in desire, you see only the manifestations. So this is a trick to get uh, a little bit higher mental look. Caught in desire. And desire, I mean, you could say if you're caught in the matrix, uh, the mystery. Free, uh, free from desire, you realize the mystery. In other words, if you're not caught in the matrix so tightly, you can see, if you can look above the duality, you can see how it's called, play, uh, playing out. Caught in the desire, caught in the matrix, caught in the duality, I want this, uh, my ego wants this. Uh, you see only the manifestation, so you see the physical reality. You, you're locked in there. It says, yet mystery and manifestations arise from the same source called darkness. So it also is, is implying that everything that flows down out comes from nothing. It kind of like is a, is a flowing out. Darkness within darkness. 
gateway to all understanding. When people see some things as beautiful, other things become ugly. Some things as good, other things become bad. See, this is how when you drop yourself down into duality, some things are good, some things are bad, some things are great. Here's some interesting things. Let me ask you if you, this ever happens to you. There used to be uh, albums, like record albums. Album, you know, they became, they came packaged in this and that and the other thing. But anyway, you'd listen to the whole, it's a collection of, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a collection of music. And so you listen to the music, mind would automatically, being that our minds are stuck in the duality, would a little bit better than the rest of the ones. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you'd start waiting till that favorite one would come out. Then you'd pick out one that, God, I wish that wasn't even on the album. I, I'm going to skip through that one. Get to, to, get to my good one again, because it's good. See, what my mind, because it's attuned to the division, it's tuned to the matrix, it automatically does that. It automatically sorts it into good and evil, ugly and pretty, good and bad. It's, it's, it kind of populates you, it automatically populates your beliefs because you, you have opinions on all these things because your mind is, is in the Maya. It actually has to, to function in the Maya. But what I'm saying is in order to really function in the Maya, we have to be able to see the Maya for, for what it is. It's the duality, it's the dark and light, it's the... And once we can see it as a duality and not us against them, then we've made the first step of elevating ourselves out of the out of the Maya. Now, bring that up is because I think, my own opinion, that a lot of the techniques that are going to work for targeted individuals are going to be techniques that have a tendency, uh, just like yeah, Ortain said. Yes, but nature equalizes. About that last week with Ramola on this broadcast, how going out into nature and you accept it with it. It's probably one of the most uh, best ways to break down this natural fight in the Maya against good and bad is to go into nature because you know what? You're part of it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you can and stop. everything is there in balance. Everything there is in balance. There's always a companion for, right. for everything that balance, All right. the effect of it. That's right. And also, it teaches us that everything is cyclical. In the duality world, we're, we will live in linear time, from past to the future. And as we go on that thing, it looks like right now, we help bent for destruction. Oh, what a bad ending. Oh, somebody better come and save us because, you know, we're, we're in a linear time. And they can program you in linear time. They can um, do predictive programming, put things in your mind, and you'll live it out in linear time. But if you're in nature, you should be open to cyclical time. Everything in nature cycles. And if you can get yourself realizing that this isn't now there's some, uh, some unpleasantness attached to it, it's a cyclical thing. It's not the end. It's a cyclical thing, and we're cycling through uh, what I think is the, the duality, the, the black and white, the us against them. So I think that what, you're, what we're going to find, and I certainly low bias uh, our findings, are going to be things that uh, get us in touch with nature, uh, get us to pull inside uh, and uh, push our beliefs aside and just become open. 
um, quiet, that critical inner voice that's always deciding whether you like something or don't like it or yeah. categorizing it into one or the other. Yeah. No. Yeah, gratitude is the one that we use probably most. Mm -hmm. And I lose that all the time. I have to be reminded. That's what we do. Uh, so anyway. So I wanted to mention that because I think most of the things are going to be things that help us climb out of the matrix and not fight back. There's a lot of stuff on that website about fighting back. Though. There's a lot of stuff about uh, technology you can use uh, and things on the website. So I hope it's a good resource for you. Well, I think it will be. But there's quite a lot backed up in the archives that need to go on there open to any feedback on how best to make you know to make the information available so it really is helpful but we're looking for ways out we're looking for ways that they shouldn't keep us out of <coughs> fear and anger and low vibrational energies and yeah so there's that, a lot of good good suggestions yeah. and they're not pushing toward one faith or another, you know, there are things that everybody can use, um, I feel. And, uh, well, that's all I have to say. Do you want to say something else, man? Mm -hmm. I think we've pretty much said it all. It sounded like too much of a heavy-duty philosophy lesson, but I do think if we're going to, we need to see what we're in and... Uh, See what we're climbing out of. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, for us, I'm going to uh, sign off. All right, thank you for joining us tonight, and we'll keep you posted on where you can find the next Surfing the Portal. Right. Probably right here until further notice. And join us on Thursdays at... Eleven o'clock Eastern, Eastern time um, for the next Techno Crime Fighters Forum. Right, thanks. Great topic. Thanks, Travis. Bye bye. Thanks, Arcane.